Thanks. Hello and welcome to This is Public Broadcasting. I'm your host, Captain Rutledge. In 2000, PBS aired the Channel 4 reality miniseries 1900 House as part of its summer lineup. The show became a huge hit and spawned a number of sequel series in the UK, Australia, New Zealand, Germany, Switzerland, and, of course, on American public television. The whole theme of 1900 House was putting a modern family in a historic setting, with barely any modern conveniences. The series won a Peabody Award and spawned numerous sequel miniseries spanning the 1600s to World War II. There are a number of these shows to look at, but for the sake of brevity, we'll only be looking at the series produced by WNET New York for PBS stations. Frontier House, Colonial House, and Texas Ranch House. From 2002 to 2006, each series involved modern-day American families going back in time to live life as pioneers, colonists, or landowners in the past years of American history. Participants for the series were chosen on the grounds that they would remain psychologically and socially strong, along with how they would interact with other families. To prepare for historical living, all participants would attend classes to learn historical skills like farming, housework, cooking, cleaning, and basic hygiene without modern essentials like microwaves, electric heating, washing machines, or even toilet paper. What's more, the sites used for each series had to be painstakingly chosen and buildings constructed from the ground up. Even the participants' clothing was fabricated in the same fashion as historical counterparts. So, without further ado, we'll take a look at each series in detail. Its participants, the time period, challenges, and the outcomes. Let's start out with Frontier House, set in Montana in 1883. The families for this series included the Clunes from California, the Glens from Tennessee, and the Brookses from Massachusetts. The Kleins and Glens had their own homesteads prepared, but they also helped the Brooks in constructing theirs. All three families have to face wild animals, runaway livestock, and illness over their five-month stay on the homesteads, and must prepare to survive the harsh Montana winter. Drama throughout the series was mostly due to arguments between Karen and Mark Glenn, who would separate at the end of the series. The Clune family constantly complained about their living conditions, even cheating by smuggling in modern hygiene products and trading homemade produced goods with neighbors in exchange for modern conveniences. All was not completely savage, though. Episode 5 had the families holding a sewing bee, and Nate Brooks marries his longtime fiancée Kristen in episode 3. The final episode featured a harvest fair for all the families and their neighbors. Local crow tribesmen would trade with the families and goods could be purchased from the local country store. In the end though, only Nate and Kristen Brooks would have been able to survive the harsh Montana winter. The Clunes, unsurprisingly, wouldn't have survived and the Glens weren't psychologically capable of surviving the winter themselves. On the whole, Frontier House is tough to get through due to the Glen and Clune family dramas, but it is still very informative if you have an interest in living history. Next we'll be going back in time to the world of Colonial House. Colonial House takes place in coastal Maine in 1628. Families included the Wires from Texas and their servants Julia Fries and Paul Hunt, the Heintzes from California and their servant Jonathan Allen, the Voorhees from Massachusetts, Freeman Danny Tisdale, Don Wood, and Dominic Muir, and the two dogs Chloe and Henry. Later on, the colonists were joined by company servant Jeff Lynn, the Verdesia family, and governor servant Claire Samuels. The series' main focus? for the colonists to set up a royal colony, work the land, establish relationships with local Native Americans, and most importantly, turn up a profit for the crown. The governor for the colony was Jeff Wires, but the Wires family were forced to leave due to a car accident back home and their daughter needing to go to the hospital. So religious leader Don Heinz would then take over as governor for the rest of the series. 
drama in this series came from the female colonists losing their 21st century rights, and the Christian fundamentals of the Wires and Heinzes coming at odds with those of the non-practicing Voorhees family. In addition, supplies start to run out by the fourth episode, forcing colonists to butcher their own animals and grow their own food. Laws for the colony were based off those of other 17th century royal colonies, however, the law of attending Sabbath was soon abolished to maintain unity within the colony. And when Jonathan Allen came out as gay in episode 4, the Puritan death penalty for homosexuality was thankfully ignored. All in all, Colonial House wasn't as drama-centered as Frontier House, but was nonetheless an extremely engaging, informative series. In 2006, PBS premiered the one final series, this time set in the days of the great cattle drives after the Civil War, Texas Ranch House. As opposed to former series with multiple families, only the Cook family from California runs things on the ranch, along with a whole swathe of employees to take care of the cattle and land. The focus? Are the Cook family and their employees capable of running the ranch at a profit? Drama started out straight away with the ranch hands despising their foreman, Colonel Johnston, who was eventually replaced by Robbie Cabezuela. The Cook family women got bored with domestic life pretty easily, and the local Comanches caused no end of trouble for the ranch. Overall, I view this series as pretty forgettable. We barely know anything about the Cook family, and there's no competition with other families within the series. It is interesting to see the interactions with Comanches and the U.S. Army, but on the whole, nothing makes it stand out much. After Texas Ranch House wrapped up production, so did any more plans for further historical reality programs by WNET New York. It would be another ten years before another program like it would come to PBS, with the BBC's Victorian Slum House in May of 2017. Really a shame, because these programs essentially brought history to life for all the viewers at home. Not only did we see how people truly lived in those days, but we also saw the sheer difficulty compared to modern living habits, and whether a modern individual could survive and thrive back then. If they had decided to produce more of these programs, it probably would have been interesting to see life during the American Revolution, the California Gold Rush, the Great Depression, and maybe even the 1950s. So much of American history is worth experiencing firsthand, and with the proper funding, could prove both entertaining and informative. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like, subscribe, and share, and also leave a comment below. Until next time, I'm Captain Rutledge. Good day. I'm surprised I'm crying. <laughs>